Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it. I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is a review of Canon's 14 to 35 millimeter f4 LIS USM lens for the RF mount. Now we've had this lens for almost a year and we're just getting around to reviewing it now. So how did we test it out? Well, the first thing that we did like nine months ago was we took it to Longwood Gardens where Steven took a bunch of pictures of landscapes, wide angles, flare, all different types of tests that he did. And this week, I took it out to the Philadelphia Phillies game where Shohei Otani was in town with the Angels and I got to shoot wides before the game. So I got the photojournalistic aspect as well as getting some up close and personal shots in the on deck circle. But we'll get to the images a little later on. Let's take a look at the outside of the lens and talk about how it feels. It has feelings and I know it has feelings because it just was on Dr. Phil and it said, cash me outside. Didn't really say that, but it's, it's light. It feels fine in the hands. It's an RF lens that is an L. That's why it has the red ring around it. You've got your command dial, or is it called command or control? Control. Controlling, I always get it wrong. It's the control ring, which I don't use to control anything. I leave that off all the time. It feels good. I mean, it's light, it's small, it's compact. It's a 14 to 35. Now, I do wanna pull this out right now, and not that, Steven. I wanna pull this lens out. This is the 15 to 35 2.8. This is an F4, this is a 2.8. There's differences in prices. There's a one millimeter difference and of course a one stop difference. We'll talk more about this 15 to 35 as we get on into this review, but there's, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to figuring out do you want a 14 to 35 F4 or do you want a 15 to 35 2.8 or some other stuff, which we'll get to in a minute. So the zoom, the throw is super quick. I mean, it's short, it's 14 to 35, you just twist, and you're all the way through. So we have a couple of switches here on the side. We have our AF to manual. You have an image stabilization switch on and off. You do have IS built into this lens, which is nice to have. You have a really dainty and small lens hood, which goes on right here. You have a 77 millimeter filter cap, or sorry, a 77 millimeter cap, as well as a 77 millimeter filter thread for filters. And yes, you can put filters on this lens without an issue. In terms of weight, Weight, this weighs in at 1.2 pounds or 544 grams, whereas the 15 to 35 2.8 weighs in at 1.85 pounds uh, and 840 grams. Now in terms of close focusing distance, it's 7.9 inches. Correct, Steven? Yeah. Yeah, 7.9 inches, is that correct? Yeah. That's, that's correct? All right, 7.9 inches is the close focusing that you can do with this lens. And for those who really care, you have nine aperture blades in this lens. Let's take you out to the ball game to Citizens Bank Ballpark where I took this lens on the Canon R3. I did not take the R5, the R5's here right now, and we're actually recording with two R5's uh, back there, but I've been taking the R3 out to the ball game and basically everywhere since I switched over about five-ish months ago to replacing the A1 for now with the R3 because of the RF glass. And it's been awesome shooting this out at the baseball games. So before the game for batting practice, which starts around 3.30, 3.45, the players start coming out on the field and I get to go down on the field with my all access pass to try and get up close and personal with the players, uh, but also, get some shots like this to test out the lens. So this right here is at 14 millimeters, just cause it's a, you know, batting practice balls that are all here. And I figured for this composition, I wanted to get one of the balls that had the Major League Baseball logo on it, but still off to the left-hand side have Citizens Bank ballpark so that you know that it's not just a bucket of balls sitting in the middle of a nowhere uh, sandlot and it's actually a, a, a stadium. So that's 14 millimeters. And this is what you get when you zoom in to 35. Now, 14 to 35 is a pretty big range. 15 to 35 is a good range. Now, I'll tell you, I never really liked the range of 16 to 35 that Canon did with their film cameras or the EF lenses. They've had a bunch of generations of that. It never felt like enough. Plus, it overlapped a ton with my 24 to 70. Now, I personally 
use the 11 to 24 from, from Canon. I adapt this lens to this day. Now this is still a $3,000 lens new. I was lucky to get this refurbed and I saved 500 bucks. So if my math is correct, uh, it's $2,500. Um, but you have to adapt this. This is a big bulbous, Stephen would tell you dirty lens because I haven't used it in a minute, but I get 11 millimeters. I get ultra wide. Give me wider. I don't need to go from 14 to 35. Like when Nikon came out with the 14 to 24 2.8 back in the day, that was a revelation. You got the 14 to 24, then the 24 to 70, they work seamlessly together. I want wider. I love the 11 to 24, but in this case, I'd rather have a 14 to 35 than a 15 to 35 because that one millimeter does make a big difference. That's what she said. So I hope that Canon comes out with an 11 to 20 to eight or a 12 to 24 to eight or just something super unique. And if it's F4, it's F4 because when you're shooting ultra wide, as you can see from these images, we're still able to blow out the background even at F4 when you get up close and personal. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo taken with the Canon 14 to 35 F4 and edited with Fro Pack 3, starting with Zoolander. Zoolander looks good. Then check this out. We've got November Rain, followed by Eckert, followed by Canadian Tuxedo, as well as Fifth Element. But I wanna go up to Fro Pack 1 because I wanna show you what happens when we hit Skittles. And boom, look how good Skittles looks. If you're looking to speed up your raw workflow, both on your desktop as well as mobile, we created 15 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. If you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to get Skittles from Fro Pack 1 as well as all of Fro Pack 1, 2, and 3, you can get the triple play bundle and save even more. Now, let's get back to the review. Continuing on, I went down the baseline because there were players just coming out on the field to stretch, and I thought that I had something wrong with how I put my lens hood on. And it's not the lens hood, it's vignetting. I mean, look at that vignette. It, it honestly may be the lens hood because I always shoot with the lens hood on because of lens flare. Look at all this vignetting that you have here. The edges are, and, and I don't really care personally. That doesn't bother me. I like how it frames you in, but sometimes it, it's pretty substantial and that's what you're seeing. I never saw this with the 15 to 35 myself, but I love the black and white. I like the tones that I was able to pull out of this on the R3, it's fantastic. The focus speed is immaculate. You do not ever seem to be like, oh, it's out, it's in, it's out, you know, where it's like, cycling through or it's pulsating like some other cameras, it just focuses. It's like using a Sony where their G Master lenses just focus. It's super fast or using the highest end Nikon Z glass, it pretty much just focuses and you don't even realize that it's happening because it's just so fast with those ultrasonic motors. See, this is why I love getting on the field before the games. The, the photojournalistic aspect, something that you can get that is different. That's why a, this 14 to 35 is a great lens for news photographers or photojournalists because you have have your wide and you can also punch in. But if I had to be at 35, then I'd rather have a 35-1-2 if Canon would ever make one. Canon make a 35-1-2 RF or take the 28 to 70 F2 and then go through that range. That's why I rather have a wider that stops around 20 millimeters or 24 millimeters because then I can just switch over to that other lens. But 14 to 35 is really good for newsworthiness type stuff. Now back over to the home plate area, we've got Bryce Harper right here in the middle. He's getting ready to take some BP. And we also have Miles Kennedy over here to the left-hand side. He is uh, crouching down. I believe he's shooting with the A1 and he has an 85, I believe 1.4, uh, he's getting some low angle shots right there. The vignetting I think only happens or does only happen at 14 millimeters. As soon as you start to zoom in, it's not there anymore. So when you're ultra wide, you're gonna see some of that vignetting. And then when you go into the computer, so look at this. So 
Here, this is at 14 millimeters. Now, I didn't shoot everything just at 14. I did shoot 35 and I did shoot in between. But when I go wide, I want to show the wide. I want to show the entire scene so that you can see where you were and paint that picture. Now, this is the dugout. We've got Joe Madden right here. He just got fired yesterday when we were, you know, we're recording it today. He just got fired. Look at the dugout where it says Geico or where it also says New Era and Citizens Bank Ballpark. You see the slight bowing of the of the dugout that's what these lenses do now they offer you lens correction in lightroom and what happens when lens correction happens is this now look at this you see how flat it is up top but the image without it is this one you see the bowing of the top of the dugout now i personally like using the top of the dugout that blue as a frame to frame in the subjects and i don't like to do the lens correction there's very few times where i personally turn on the lens correction because it crops the image and sometimes you miss out on certain things in this case i think it did a really good job to it, it kind of makes the image slightly better because i got this gray hair guy on the left that i chopped part of his head and i chopped part of the head of the guy on the right and it, I like that composition better than it did, um, but I still like slight bowing of the images. Moving on to game action stuff. I am sitting on the third base inside spot at Citizens Bank Ballpark. You can have two photographers sitting in this area. As you can see, there's a guy with a 402.8 Sony right next to me, and I'm sitting next to him with the 14 to 35 F4 and you're protected except for the spot right here where you're not protected with the net uh, and a foul ball actually came back and i i ducked like this right into the line of the foul ball thankfully it hit the net if it was another two feet over it would have hit me in the head or in the fro and maybe missed my head and then i would have been on tv uh, some guy started yelling at me for ducking he's like fro you suck you ducked and i was like i didn't flinch i just moved out of the way i should have gone like this okay here's Shohei Otani warming up. We've got Blue Hour, the perfect light during the baseball game. It's about 825 right here at night. The sun is going down. We've got nice wispy clouds. We could see the lights up above. We don't have any flaring happening from the lights up above. He's right in front of me. I'm at 14 millimeters ultra wide. The colors look great. I gotta say, shout out to Skittles, modified Skittles from Fro Pack One for giving a great starting point for sports and for landscape. The next image of, of Shohei is at 19 millimeters. The tones and the colors look great here. Off the R3, it looks awesome with the Skittles being uh, preset and modified, looks great. You do see the vignetting around the outside, just you can correct for that if you want. I like the way that it naturally frames my subjects for the most part. And I think at the end of the day, most people aren't gonna be like, oh my God, look at that, that's the worst thing ever. But everything's sharp, everything's colorful, nice tones, and everything looks great. I'm happy with these sports images. Normally I'm a 2.8 or better type Type of person but when you're on those wide angles it doesn't matter as much and at the end of the day if you get the photo no matter what you use you got the photo very few people are going to sit there and be like yeah that was f4 that would have been better if it was at 28 now nah, that stuff doesn't really exist uh last couple images let's take you back nine months to longwood gardens where steven and i went out we were testing what the 100 macro yep. at the time we were also testing the 100 macro. Steven went along to take pictures as well as film some video. And here he did this with, what were you on the R5? Yep, on the Canon R5. We're at 14 millimeters. You can still see that the vignetting was there at the edges. It's still sharp, it's still colorful. It looks very good. And in terms of flaring and ghosting, this is that shot right up into the sun so you can see whether that's good or not. I leave that to you to decide whether this is good or not. I don't really care. I just take pictures. That's what I care about is capturing the moment. Let me jump in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online portfolio, use what I use for jaredpollen.com and have been using for over 10 years. 10 years! The reason I use it is it's super easy to set up and I guarantee you in under 30 minutes, you can have a full website up with multiple galleries to showcase your work. To get your 14-day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the review. Steven has some really good landscape pictures here. This one's at 35, and, and I really like the angle that he took, because the focus of the image really is this 
uh, house in the background, and this is at F8. Colors are nice, tones are nice. The focus doesn't matter as much in this case because we're not worrying about batters and people running, but this looks really nice. Up close and personal, using that close focusing distance of 7.9 inches to frame this up really nice. The sun is out of the frame. You're not getting any flaring or ghosting that I can see. The tones and colors are great. Uh, sharpness right on this, this flower is very nice. Steven, nice job. You're welcome. Someone give that guy a raise. Woo. Woo, give him a raise. And yeah, the lines on this, is this 35? Yeah, the 35 looks nice here. This is 35, he's at F4, wide open, 100 ISO. One, one, I can't see my eyes blurry. I think that says one, one hundredth of a second. I can't count the zeros, my eyes are blurry. But I think it's one, one hundredth of a second at F4 at 100 ISO, and that looks really nice. All right, photos are good. The big questions come down to, which do you want? A 14 to 35, which is $1,699. If it's on sale, it may be 50 bucks off, but that depends on when you're watching this. $1,699 for this F4. Now it's the widest that you can get for RF currently at the time of recording this. The other option is your 15 to 35 2.8. I love 2.8s or better. This is great, this 15 to 35, but 14 does make a difference. It really does and so does 12, and so does 11 right here. You got $3,000 for this bad boy, $1,699 for this bad boy. You have to adapt this to the camera, which is not ideal at this point, point. and this is $2,399. So you have a $700 difference. Is there a $700 quality difference? I mean, I still want 2.8 or better. Personally, if I had to choose, I would like to take the 15 more often, but I don't think 15, is as wide. You know why? Because 14's wider. Duh, 14's wider. I know, that's a great statement. Um, I'm about to head out to Chicago to go to Wrigley Field, and I'm taking the 14 to 24 to, <laughs> I almost said 2.8. I'm taking the 14 to 35 F4 over the 15 to 35 2.8, because when I'm shooting wide, it doesn't really matter as much, and I want wider, and that's what I care about. So, sniff test, wind tunnel test, what do we got here? Oh, Harry Carey. Oh, take me out to the ball game. He was always drunk. Uh, Cause it's a lot to, anyway, I'm going to Wrigley. So it's a good thing that it smells like him. Wind tunnel test. Yeah, passed the wind tunnel test as well. Um, who's it for at the end of the day? I mean, the photojournalist. The fact that you have 14 to 35, it's light. It doesn't take, as, uh, take up as much space in the bag. You can go 14, you can go to 35. It's great photojournalistic lens. You could do landscapes with it. You could take it to weddings. I mean, it's all around. If you need wide, this is it. My thing to Canon is, I'm sure you're working on it. There's patents that are showing 12 to 24 2.8s. Give me something cooler. Give me an 11 to 20 F2. Like, let's go to town. Of course, it's heavier, but let's see what you can come up with because I gotta go wider than 14 in, in, at, at this time because you have an 11 to 24, and Nikon has a 14 to 24 2.8, and Sony has a 12 to 24 2.8. If Sony can do it, so can you. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. What would you shoot with this lens? Thank you very much for watching. Jared, PolinFronosPhoto.com. See ya.